Hello, this is Clem McDonald, and I'm going to continue this Visual Basic tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to look at your first code. So, in more specific, we're going to look at coding for an event-driven system, and we're going to review the handles clause within, um, within the system. So, what I've done here is I've created my project. Again, I just added a new project. I haven't, I've done nothing to it, so it's just a blank project. Um, and we'll go from there. So the first things we're going to do is to is we're going to look at a couple things. So if you open up or expand the form object here, you can see that you have the form object, which is the design um, screen. And then if you double click on the sub form here, you actually get the class object, which is the code that runs behind the form. And this is where you put in all your custom code and the custom things that you need to put in. And you can see it's pretty basic. It's public class form one and class. Uh, later on in another tutorial, we'll explain more about classes and what they are. But for now, just assume that every form has a class behind it. And that class is called the same name as the form itself. So an event-driven system basically runs code when something happens. And so, and when something happens, you handle that occurrence. And so there are lots of items out there. So we're going to look at a few basic ones for now. So let's start with the simplest one, which is a button. So we'll throw a button on the form, and I'm going to throw this in the bottom left, bottom right corner, sorry. Make this a little bigger. We're going to change the button to exit. And we're going to anchor this bottom right, like so. And we'll change the name to button exit. When you're doing event-driven systems, it's really important to rename your objects before you create the events. And that way, you're not spending a lot of time renaming your subroutines and your events and everything like that. So get all your properties set before you do too much in the coding um, from this side. Things like fonts and colors are not that important for event-driven systems. They're more for user interface, so I'm not going to bother changing them in this case. We'll leave it as is. So in order to create your first event, you can use what's called the default event for a control. For a button, the default event is the click event, so you clicked on the button. So if you double click on any object on the form, it will create an event for the default event for that particular object. So a text box would be you change the text. For a drop down list, you change the selection. Uh, and for a button, you clicked on it. So if you double click on the button, you can see that we've created a subroutine here called private sub button exit click. This is just the name. It's, it can be anything. I can change this to anything I want as long as it's unique. Uh, and then a couple of parameters. So it has the object that's sending it. So this object would actually be the button. So the object would be a type button and it would be button exit. And then E is the event arguments. So these are the things that get sent along with it. For a button, there's not too many event arguments, but um, we're going to handle the delegates later in another tutorial. And then in the event-driven system, as I said, you're handling the event. And in this case, the event is I clicked on button.exit. So this subroutine is going to handle that event. So I can do something like um, message box hello world, just like that. And so I've written my first little bit of code. And what this is going to do is going to pop up a little message box saying, hello world. And it's going to happen when I click on the button. So when I find an event in the system and I handle that event, whatever I put in the handle for the event will happen when that event gets triggered. So let's go back to the form here. We're going to save all. So save all. And then I'm going to run this form. Make sure that this is my current project. And it is. So I'm going to start this form. and runs and up came the form and now you can see I have mouse overs and different things like that but when I click on that exit button up comes hello world that's pretty cool and so I've handled the event of clicking on a button so you're saying to me now well there's lots of things I can do with a button so a mouse over different things like that and yeah there is that's true so where do I find those events because if I double click on this button again I'm just gonna get the click event <clears throat> The answer to that is actually fairly simple. When you're in the code system, at the top of the code, there's three drop-down lists. 
The one on the left is to do with the project itself. Um, as you can see, only the project is in there. Then on the uh, the one in the center are all the elements of the project. So as you add more controls to the form, this list grows. So right now we have the form events itself plus the button. And then when I choose the button, the third drop down is all the events that are associated with the button. So as you can see, there are a lot of events with a button. So let's check at something like, uh, is there mouse hover there we go so let's choose mouse hover as soon as I choose mouse hover you can see it created a new subroutine and it handles mouse hover over the button exit so it means when I hover the mouse over the button it will run whatever's here so let's do something like me dot button exit dot background color equals uh, color dot red Okay, so when I mouse over that button, it should turn red. So let's see if that actually works. So we'll save everything here and run the run the uh, project. And when I mouse over it, it turns red. But it also doesn't turn back to its original color again. So you have to be careful when you're handling events, because if you do something on an event that that event can be undone you have to handle the undoing of that event as well so we'll close this off and we'll create another button which would probably be mouse leave so if we do mouse leave we can do me dot button exit oops, I spell it right here exit um, button exit dot back color equals color dot and what are all these colors I have in here let's just choose gray so gray okay so we're gonna change it back to gray whenever it's done now that being said <coughs> the button isn't gray when I first load the form so what I'm also going to do is on my form event and I'm gonna choose specifically the load event for the form so when I first load the form up this event triggers I'm gonna set the background color of the button to be gray as well so when the form first loads I'm gonna set it to gray when I mouse over, it's going to go to red, and when I leave the mouse over, it's going to go back to gray again. So it's going to look like a hyperlink on a website. So let's run that and see what happens. So you can see the button's gray. It's not the default Windows color anymore. It's gray because it ran on the me load event. And then as I mouse over, it turns red, and as I mouse leave, it turns back to gray again. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a hesitation there, and that's because there's animation associated with the button. So it actually sort of pushes the button, then turns red. So you can change that and play with that a little bit, but for now, we've got the, good, the, the right idea. All right, so now as we're here, we can also create other events. So let's go to the double-click on the button event, and you can see that instead of hello world, we're actually going to choose me.close. So what me.close is going to do is actually close the form and because our project is set up that when the first form that got opened closes, it actually closes the application, it will clear the memory and do all that for us. So the idea is we've got that event handled. So most of the time your event's going to be around clicking buttons and those kind of things, but there's all kinds of other events that can happen too. So we can do something like, let's add a text box. Okay gonna have a text box here and we want this text box to be um, a numeric field alright and just so that I can test this here I'm gonna add a second text box that I can click in and so this first text box when we go ahead and do this we're gonna rename this we're gonna call this txt number okay I want to make sure that this text box actually has a number in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create an event for this text box but if I double click on it it's going to be the text changed event okay so that maybe is not going to be what I want it to be so what we're going to do is we're going to look in our code and we're going to look for the events so we're going to choose our object which is text number and we're going to choose what event we want here so what I want to do is when we leave the text box so there's an event here called lost focus so when it loses focus, which means the cursor goes somewhere else, we can run a check. So we're going to say, if not is numeric, okay, me.txtnumber.text, 
then we want to do something like hey that doesn't work so we'll throw a message box up saying invalid input okay and then we're going to say me.txt number dot focus which puts the focus back in the box so no matter where else we click if that's not a number we want it to go back into that box and then we're also going to do me.txt number dot txt number dot select all and what that's going to do it's going to highlight everything that's in the box so if we just want to type in something new we can just type it right away and so that makes it fairly easy so let's go ahead and test that so run that <clears throat> our exit button still works on our mouse over that's fantastic our text box is here so let's put an a in that box and i'll click somewhere else now, when I click somewhere else, that text box lost focus, which is an event which triggers a subroutine to happen. So the subroutine checked whether it was numeric. It was not, so it says invalid input. I say OK. It put the cursor back in that text box and selected everything. So now I can just type in a number and click somewhere else. And notice when I click somewhere else now, it passed that test, and there we go. And it, and it works and didn't give me a message box or an error. So that's an event. So there are all kinds of events in there. There's form events, there's project events, and there are object events. And so all of these events can happen and are triggered by handles. And so that gives you a really good idea of how the handling works. Um, there are thousands of handles in any one given project. And it's just for you to matter of, it's a matter of you finding the ones that you want to use that have things that happen or stuff that happens when that event triggers and for you to create that code effectively and so we'll just before we go we'll run the last event and that's the exit button so when we click on exit it does me dot close closes down the program and goes all right so that's fantastic thank you very much